Hello chess lovers, Surin here and in this video I want to share with you a very dramatic game played between Mikhail Tal and Vasily Smyslov. The game was played in 1959 at Bled Zagreb Belgrade Candidates Tournament. As you know, Mikhail Tal won the event thus getting a chance to play a World Chess Championship match against Mikhail Botvinnik. This game was played in round 22 and Tal had white pieces opened up with e4. Smyslov responded with Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and e6. Shevening and variation is on the board against which white is choosing the classical variation bishop e2. a6, white castled kingside, knight bd7, f4, b5, bishop f3, bishop b7, and a3. Other popular alternative is e5, but in the game we see a3 stopping the b pawn. Queen c7 by Smyslov, queen e1. From this square, the queen can both support the advance of the e pawn, and also by putting the queen either on g3 or on h4, white can organize a nice attack. Bishop e7, king h1, a standard prophylactic move in classical variation. Rook b8. From b8, the rook can support the advance of the b pawn. And also, black is overprotecting the bishop on b7. In some cases, that fact can be useful. Meanwhile, Tal wants to fianchetto his queenside bishop. And actually, in classical variation, this idea is not that popular. Usually, white is putting his bishop on e3. Uh, in here, black castled kingside, bishop b2, rook e8, freeing the uh, f8 square for the bishop. And also, preparing e5. Queen g3, bishop f8. From f8, the bishop gives a huge solidity to the king side. Rook a e1. Meanwhile, Tal is centralizing his rooks. And already seems like that white wants to go for e5 advance, but uh, black stopped it. And uh, Smyslov himself played e5. Uh, knight f5 by Tal, king h8, moving away the king from the dangerous g file. Queen h4. He takes f4, queen takes f4, knight e5. Rook e3. From the third rank, Tal can switch his rook into the attack. g6, knight h6, bishop g7, knight d5, after which the exchange of knights on d5 followed, and f6. Yeah, already bishop takes e5, knight takes f7 is the threat, that's why black played f6, and bishop e4. This is a dubious move by the future world chess champion, and as Harry Golombek said, an unsound sacrifice since white gets insufficient attack in return for his piece. Yes, in this case white is provoking black to play g5 and suddenly the knight on h5 finds itself unprotected. That's why instead of playing bishop e4 it was better to play h4, stopping g5. But instead we see bishop e4 and Smyslov used his chance to win a piece, g5 is on the board. Queen f5, bishop takes h6, queen takes f6. Uh, in return, Tal is removing this pawn, but this is actually not giving white much, and uh, the one who has huge advantage is black. In here, of course, queen takes g5 is also playable, but Tal played queen f5, uh, creating a mating threat. Knight g6 by Smyslov, both neutralizing the mating threat, also opening up the dark squared bishop's diagonal, and rook h3. Right now both rook takes h7 can be a nice threat, or queen takes g6, both are leading to a forced mate. Uh, but uh, Smyslov played bishop takes b2, and freed the 7th rank for the queen. Queen takes g6, rook e7, black is protecting the pawn on h7, rook h6. Rook g8, queen f5, at the same time still protecting the bishop on e4, and as you may have already guessed, queen takes d6 was not good in the end of the day, white was losing the bishop, and uh, exchange of queens actually favor black. Bishop c8 by Smyslov, queen f3, he's harassing white queen further, queen d3, but uh, all the time Tal is keeping an eye on h7. Bishop e5, c4, this time Tal is trying his luck on the queen side. Uh, b takes c4, b takes c4, rook e g7, c5. Uh, relying on the fact that the queen can't leave the 7th rank because of this. Bishop takes h7 move, and to c5, Smyslov answered with d takes c5, but uh, Tal suddenly got a passed pawn on the d file. And the way Tal is managing to create problems is uh, very interesting, you know. Queen a7 by Smyslov, bishop d5, hitting on g8. Rook goes on d8, queen e4, attacking the bishop on e5, 
bishop d4. Uh, of course, the pawn on d6 is untouchable because you have a back rank weakness and white can simply munch it. That's why to queen e4, Smyslov answered with bishop d4 and queen f4. White is creating queen f8 threat, rook gd7, which is a terrible mistake and is losing. This was the last move before the time control, which throws away the game. Uh, now, let's go back and see why queen f8 is so dangerous. Uh, let's just make a random move. For example, if we move like a5, then white can play queen f8 check. Of course, accepting the queen sacrifice is losing on the spot. Yeah, black king is getting checkmated. Uh, that's why to queen f8 check, the black should answer with rook g8. But even in this case, black has little chances of saving the game. Rook takes f8 can follow. Now, king g7 can't be played because of this rook takes h7 check and you are losing your queen. This is a very important moment and uh, this is something which in his calculations Black should take into consideration before making a move on move 40. Uh, and now if we move like bishop f5 then d7, if queen takes d7 then bishop e6 check, yeah white is inviting black queen on a vulnerable square and then is winning it. Now if bishop c2 then bishop f5 moving away the bishop but white has a very nice attacking bishop f5 move and now if you uh, move away your bishop then rook takes h7 can follow and if uh, bishop takes f5 then rook takes f5 and it seems like that in this case again white is going to win now uh, let's go back in our game to queen f4 so rook gd7 was played with which black opened up a loop for his king but before proceeding let's see how harry golombek describes the situation in his book fourth candidates tournament 1959 the spectators had their money's worth in excitement at any rate in the 22nd round the focus for this was the Tal Smith's love game, in which Tal sacrificed a piece for an attack that certainly should not have been sufficient. All seemed over and I had left the scene to type out my report giving the result as Smith's love 1, Tal 0, when the assistant director of the tournament came over to me and said that Smith's love had resigned. In fact, Smith's love's last move was a complete blunder throwing away the game. I had to rewrite my report, whilst the Russian journalist who had already informed Moscow that Tal had lost had to contact Moscow again by telephone and eat his words. Uh, so at this point there is only one move which is allowing Black to win. Uh, in the time trouble Smyslov played rook gd7 and threw away the game, but seems like that even if he had time, finding the winning move is a huge challenge. For example, in his book as a winning move, Golombek suggests rook dg8, but this is not giving black much and uh, actually we have an equality on the board. Uh, in here, uh, white can simply capture on g8. If rook takes g8, then rook e1. In his analysis, Golombek is suggesting queen f7, uh, the exchange of queens which is allowing black to win. Yeah, this is a terrible move and in this case black is winning. Uh, instead uh, white should play rook e1 creating rook e7 threat. And now if queen b7 in order to meet rook e7 with queen b1 then rook h5. If bishop e6 then rook e5. Yeah, and still everything is not clear. Rook e7. The engine gives an equality, but this is still going to be a tough fight. And the winning move in here is queen d7. Black is putting his queen on a square where it's protected by the bishop. And now the line starting with queen h8 check is not giving much. Black can play rook g8, and if bishop takes g8, then rook takes f8. And in this case, in the end of the day, black has this king g7 move because the queen on d7 is protected. Yes, in this case, uh, once the queen is on d7, it makes a huge difference and black is winning. Uh, so in the game to queen f4, rook gd7 was made and with his next move, Tal forced a resignation. Can you find Tal's next move? Ready? Uh, black actually created a loop for his king already. Uh, queen f8 check is not winning, but Tal played rook f6, uh, formed a battery and forced a resignation already. This time rook f8 is a menacing threat. For example, if rook g7, then rook f8 check. 
And yeah, how are you going to survive? If rook g8, then simply bishop takes g8. Yeah, just no way out, you know. If here, then queen takes f8. And black is losing. And then queen takes c8. If here, then rook f8. That's why on move 41, once rook f6 appeared on the board, Smyslov copied to late hit. So we saw that Tal's sacrifice was a mistake and Smyslov managed to gain a huge advantage. But then Tal started to create so many problems for his opponent that Smyslov started to burn time, found himself in time trouble and with just one blunder threw away the whole game. That was definitely a huge disappointment for him. Uh, the way Tal is managing to create attacking resources and creating problems for his opponent uh, is really amazing, guys. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and, as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out the playlist of Mikhail Tal's games as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.